What's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing well. My name is Lamont. I've been a full-time trader for seven years now, part of the Chart Guys team for more than half of that, where I head up our futures room and our swing report. In this video, we'll go over the overall market, cover some hype sectors, hit you with some trade zones, and uh, that is pretty much it. So let's get into it. All right, so starting off with SPY, last week we were talking about how there's really just one more challenge left for these operators, right? Oh, for these buyers, I should say. And it is just this guy over here, this supply that is sitting at all time high. And so let's see, we ended the prior week here, or two weeks prior, I should say. And pretty much the best case scenario occurred, right? Where you have a gap up and go kind of a situation. So you gap on this day, incomplete gap fill, move back over. And ever since then, all, all the buyers have done is set a daily higher low and broke into a higher high. So although they have not yet broken over a key all-time high resistance, which is, of course, at 524.61, they're positioned really well to make another attempt at that because, again, this is the only supply that's left. So I've got this uh, potential trade zone set up here because it's really just based off of this structure and this structure. And you'll see that it covers the value area low of this structure here. It also uh, definitely covers this guy over here, 512.76, because essentially at this point now, you as long as you're holding over here, 510.75, then this change right from this breakout has not been negated. Now, if the sellers are going to have a go at it, and if they do happen to crack this guy, maybe even they fill the gap, as long as they don't trade through this, so actually I should probably adjust this a little bit. All right, we can go back to using this guy as a reference again, so... Something like this, I think, is... I mean, honestly, I think this is fine. I, I, don't, I don't think we have to go so deep like this. If you want to be a bit more conservative, you know, something like that is okay. <laughs> I forget how little risk it is on these ETF charts. Um, but still, I, I still think that's probably unnecessary. Something like this is probably conservative enough. Um, if you're looking for a potential higher low play, not necessarily a daily higher low off of this price action higher low, but a higher low to be set over this uh, prior high, right? So I think this is a fairly reasonable trade zone, essentially looking for a weekly higher low. Yeah, weekly higher low. Lots of space for that weekly higher low to be set over 493.86. I got some uh, friends with me, so I hope they don't go crazy. Sometimes they go crazy. Um, so anyway, excuse me. Um, so anyway, that is pretty much it for the SPY. At this point now, just 524.61, and if they can hold over 512.76, that would keep them... Honestly, to, to stay the most confident, you would hold over 518.40, right? Because that's the low of this supply sitting at all-time high. So 518.40, if that holds throughout next week, that's pretty much no red flag for buyers. If, as long as you're holding over 512.76, you're still doing okay. Over 510.70, under 510.75 is when we start to think, okay, this is starting to be a bit problematic, but we'll still have to see how much follow through they can get back under 510.75. Basically, if we don't see follow through through this supply now, or we see a pop and drop kind of a situation, that opens up the scenario where we're just kind of looking at more bigger picture balance. Okay, so we shall see. Um, QQQ as well, I have a, a little bit of a trade zone set up here. And again, it's based off of the lows of this demand zone here, which you can clearly tell was very significant, right? Once you clear back into this structure, the value area low hold of it becomes key. The value area high becomes the high of the day for this session. You set a higher low with a failure to get down to the value area low. You know, as we very often talk about, it's very uh, valuable to not just consider what price has done, but also what price hasn't done, right? So a gap down situation, that's what price has done, fair enough. But what hasn't price done on this day is it hasn't come down to the key test, right? This key level here, the value area low of this area that's acting as daily supply as long as you're under the point of control. So think about it. You put that all together, right? You're coming in from the underside. This is a supply zone. You just rejected from the value area high, which is a very notable rejection. You should look for a test of the point of control. If the point of control can't hold, you should look for a test of the value area low. If they fail to get to the value area low, that's a very notable failure, right? Because that's the sellers going back on the offensive, right? Once the sellers are back under the point of control of a structure, they're defensively strong, but they're not technically moving value back lower relative to this structure unless they're under the value area low. So you can say that this, this stuff over here, right? Uh, this buyer's getting stuffed over here at the value area high of this structure, which is also happens to be the low of this guy, right? 
of the structure sitting at all-time high. The rejection there affirms this structure as supply and resistance. It also affirms this structure as supply and resistance. So you should expect a move down to the POC, and then you should expect to move down to the value area low. So a notable failure, and now that you've popped it back above it, despite the Friday being a weekday, I guess I should have covered this in SPY as well, despite the Friday being a weekday, right, in the sense that, you know, sellers controlled the session, right, meaning cash market sellers were in control because for a lot of the session, because much of the session was spent under the open, and you do close right from the open still from a close to close situation, Friday was still a gain. And so the sellers didn't really change anything, despite the fact that they controlled the um, a majority of the session and control and uh, held price under the open. The prior day session, Thursday session, the point of control, you don't find acceptance under it, right? So here's the point of control from uh, Thursday session, and they you don't find acceptance under it, and so value still moved higher, right? It's overlapping, but it's still higher. So the buyers are actually okay, despite the fact that Friday didn't look so great. Um, uh, they're okay from a session to session perspective, not just a session to session perspective, but technically a daily perspective as well. Because again, I apologize to go back and forth so much, but you know, the spy is still over this prior high. QQQ is also, this session is also still over these four days, you know? So again, despite this being a pretty indecisive day, you'll see again, very little follow through beyond the point of control of Thursday session on Friday, despite the fact that the sellers contained uh, the buyers under the open for the majority of the session. So. Uh, basically, the sellers control the session relative to the open, but on the daily perspective, buyers are still fine. So at this point now, this trade zone is based on the fact that, okay, well, if they do start to press from here, the sellers, right, want to crack back down under here. If they are going to crack under it, with, but then fail, it would be pretty reasonable for them to fail off of the value area low of this guy over here, you know? So um, that is pretty much it, okay? So the daily trend is also fine, bullish, right? Uh, higher low established at 437.55. And we're just looking up at 444.74, 446.87, and then the all-time high resistance, 449.34. So buyers, again, looking pretty good here, right? Weekly higher lows, you know, very much looking set. Space for another higher low over 413. I'm sorry, for QQQ, it's not a weekly higher low. For SPY, it's a weekly higher low. But for QQQ, it was a weekly lower high, lower low, Yes, I think the lower high and the lower low is kind of the same candle, but I mean, the the lower high is a rinky-dink one. The higher low was technically never really confirmed, but I guess this one was. So technically, that's a rinky-dink lower high into a lower low. Either way, based for the weekly higher low over 413.07. Okay. And that is pretty much it. You know, these are just, you know, like pretty, pretty conservative targets too. Like if we are going to break into all-time highs, you know, we're probably looking at a go at the R1, right? Because we've been floating over the pivot for so long. You know, if, if these buyers hire high from here, we're probably looking at 461.51. Next. Oh, I didn't notice that was like a pretty much a perfect 50 RSI hold there. Um, all right, so that's it for the Qs. And then for the Dow. So the Dow, this is a very notable balance. You have a ton of space that said another daily higher low over... 377.98. Anything over that will be good for a daily higher low. And I'm, I'm just using these two structures as a reference or as references, as you say, um, for this trade zone here, which would cover the value area low of this lower structure. But, you know, ideally, if these buyers were to stay strong from here, just like with a SPY and the QQQ, you wouldn't lose 385.60, or actually, rather, it should be moved now to this. Uh, 385. Same level, really. Um, you can see its significance was affirmed over here. Basically, this is a local demand zone now. And if we pull back, the buyer should be interested in defending this demand zone if they're you know, going to have a go at any pressing into all-time highs. And if that is going to be the case, then this is a pretty reasonable trade zone. You'd probably have hourly oversold conditions here, two major point of controls, good amount of volume traded. It would cover the gap fill as well, more or less. And it's probably like a 50% to a golden pocket. Yeah, roughly. That's a 382 to a golden pocket. It's, you know, these kind of things just tend to, you know, have confluence, right? For me personally, you ask me, you know, obviously I prioritize price and volume. You know, everything else is technically derivative of that, right? Even a FIB pool is just derivative of two price points, right? All of those key levels are derived from two price points. So, um, and there is some subjectivity to it, right? Some folks might say, hey, listen, why don't you just pull it from here? And then some other folks might say, no, you know, we'll pull it from the whole move. 
I don't really think there's a right or a wrong to that, right? Just, you know, which which leg are you looking to play off of, right? Personally, these days, I would just look at this one as one move and look at this as one retracement. Um, but either way, this is, you know, kind of why I prefer volume profile is because, you know, it's, I see the locations, you know, I know that these are the key locations because of what the market has already told me, as opposed to speculating uh, off of something that is, you know, derived from two points in the market, right? So anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, for the Dow, just all time high resistance now, really. Uh, 398.82, and for most confidence that buyers would just hold over 392.63 because that would just mean that this guy is slowly flipping into support. Did I skip over any of that? No, that's good. Okay, so IWM has now come into our lower trade zone. So we really, you know, this one is worth like remembering, burning into your brain because, you know, re recall the, uh, the initial hedging position here, right? So we got this one, then we got this one. What this is is responsive trade, right? You're responding, or rather, you're taking trade when price responds to one edge of an of, of a balance area, right? When so when price is going and you know just trading between two very major areas, which you know you're probably sick and tired and tired of hearing me talk about this for IWM, right? But it's these two structures, right? This guy over here, you know, these two, this fella, the upper fella made for all of these lows and all of these highs, this lower fella made for all of these lows and then all of these highs. And so what you have is no man's land under all of this supply over all of this demand. And so both of these plays were just looking for failures to not find acceptance, right? Or failures to find acceptance, I just say, over again, these two, right? And so lo and behold, responsive trade works, right? Because I mean, not to say that it's not as if one type of trade always works. The idea is that a responsive trade here was reasonable, you know, whether or not it worked. It's reasonable because we're just balancing, right? Bigger picture. The market right now is trying, as long as we're in this no man's land, the market is trying to determine, are we going to come back down into this demand zone or are we going to come into this supply zone? That is really it, you know? So um, if you took this trade or if you took any kind of trade, you know, bottom fishing off of these lows, by now you should be out, you know, a good amount of your position such that you can ride all of this drawdown and it wouldn't be that big of a deal you can throw your stop under this low here uh 191.34 and if you are still in from what day did we do that oh no that was on the it wasn't our regular group never mind um not regular group our uh, slack community everyone's regular <laughs> or no everyone's exceptional which then makes us all regular. um perspective anyway uh so that is not it. So for IWM, then we're, we're still pretty much looking at the same thing, right? If you look at what happened on Friday, what, what happened? You know, you opened pretty much right at the value area low of this key structure. This is the same guy from 2021, right? So you open up right at the value area low of this guy, and it's very similar to the QQQ situation, but reverse. Remember in QQQ, we were saying, okay, listen, you opened up right close to that value area low, the seller target, and yet they couldn't get there, very notable failure. It's similar for IWM where you open right at this value area low of that, you know, key uh, supply zone. And then you were positioned well to press the situation if you could hold over the open, which they did pop open for a little bit. But then they failed to get to this key level, this point of control, roll back down under. This is a bit of a red flag. And so now we should be looking out for 202.88 next. That's the low of this guy. That's the local supply that they're trying to get through right now. If they can break through 202.88, then eyes on 200.41. As long as 200.41 is supportive, then these higher prices relative to the, this leg, the last week essentially, uh, week plus one, are, are still being accepted. Okay, so not that much space for a price action day, a higher low over 202.56 over this low over here. But like I said, I you know me, I always care much more about these demand zones as opposed to the uh, price action. Uh, higher, I, I, I'm always very mindful of it, right? Because that's, you know, that's how price kind of develops, right? But um, to me, it's more like the price action trend is more like how price is traveling, uh, I guess, in a, like a, almost like a, uh, just a lower priority, right? Like a, it is how it is flowing for sure. But for me, these demand zones are kind of like, so when price is trending well, it's flowing well, like a like water flowing. And these are almost like areas where there was, there was already excess water. Right. And so water can only flow back into this area where there was excess water if there was if there's no longer excess water here. Right. And so I really only care if the water is starting to flow back into a prior area. 
that if that makes sense, right? Because we can swirl around in here, you know, making higher lows, lower highs, or whatever. But as long as we don't get back under here, this change has not been negated. Higher prices relative to then are being accepted. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much it for the IWM. Actually, uh, also space for a higher low over 191.34. But there's the potential that IWM sets a weekly lower high under 211.88, which would increase the potential, right, for the uh, SPY, the QQQ, the Dow, for them to also just be setting weekly lower highs. Despite the fact that they're very close to their all-time highs, we can't just assume that the buyers are going to just, you know, run with it. So that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm really shocked that these dogs are being so calm right now. Like, normally, whenever I do anything without them, they're, like, all up, um, in my face. Some of the neediest two dogs that I've, I've ever seen. But I guess, I, I don't know, I guess they enjoy charting. <laughs> so anyway, um, so the dollar then, uh, notable rejection, right, from this key supply. Like we've been discussing, really very little has changed in the dollar in years because as long as you're holding over this key supply and this key demand, then we should expect this kind of price action, which, you know, of course, that's a given, right? And so we are now very notable, right? The idea is now that we've rejected from this supply again, the seller should be trying to come back down to this key is it this guy? Yes, this key demand zone, again, that's from all the way back here. Should be trying to come back down here again, and they just have these steps that were built along the way that we've been using as references. We're kind of using this one right now in conjunction with this one. This is the local structure, right? And so you'll see then that the daily no change level, meaning to negate this change, is at 104.840. Did I just zoom in without noticing? I think I did. I, think I zoomed in a lot without noticing. Um, I don't hate that. It's like I zoomed in one, right? Anyway, um, yeah, so we have space for a daily higher low now after breaking under 104.840 with no follow through. That's pretty notable. You know, if the dollar starts cooking here and breaks over this area of supply, 106.335, and then, you know, that opens up all of this price action. And this is like kind of pretty much just one way trade. So it does have the potential to be squeezy here. That would probably put some pressure. That would uh, likely put some pressure on some on the asset buyers. That's, you know, obviously stocks, uh, commodities and whatnot. Excuse me. Um, all right, so space for a daily higher low to be set. Anything over 104.410 will be good for one. Key daily lower high resistance, 105.640. If they can break that from here, then that'll be a confirmed uh, daily uptrend. And really, it's just all about this local supply now, right? So accept this back under 104.75 and 104.840. That's going to let us know that, that pretty much that would increase the probability of us coming all the way back down to this guy, right? So we'll just watch these guys build on the way up, all right? And if you're in for, from this uh, trade zone off the dollar, if you're a dollar trader, um, I, I don't know how many of you there are out there, honestly. But uh, if that's the case, you know, at this point, if you turn it down any initiations in here, it always makes sense to take some profits off no later than oops, no later than the prior low, right? So the prior low that you just fell out of was over here. So if any initiations in here, chop it up here. Stop is under here. If you stop out, at least you walk away with a little bit of a win. That's trading, you know. So the VIX is just, you know, just drilling again. It's, we'll probably see some, you know, from some volatility enter the market soon again, right? Because this is straight from the highs, right? So just whenever you drill straight from the highs like that, back down to the lows, you know, the odds of you just seeing at least a little bit of snapback just increases. So I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I would not be surprised with some short-term volatility uh, in the near term. And as long as we're holding under 1544, you know, again, it's it's pretty much right back to business, right? Relative to the October low, ever since the October low. So that's pretty much it. Moving on to, I just got an idea for something that I need to write down. This is like a technical thing. I just realized that I can be using the developing VA on larger time frames, right? For like a trend kind of deal. Um, similar to like an anchor VWAP. Essentially. Why don't we do that right now? We'll do it live. I just it just struck me though. And I didn't want to forget. Um, let's just do that right now. We'll just get a new uh, if you don't mind, if you don't mind bearing with me here. And, uh, obviously the uh timestamps and stuff are down in the uh description below. So you can just um, you know skip ahead if this is not something that you're interested in, but I just had a bit of a uh curiosity. Okay, so all right, how am I going to do this? Right, this is, I don't, I don't want any of this stuff here. So I'll hide all of it. Oh, 
Okay, what I, I just want to see something like this. I just need this really. Quick glance. We can pull it from the this low, right? From the October low. This is our developing. And then I'm very curious to see what it would look like if we did it like this. Okay, we don't need that. Um, let me remove that. Yeah, you know what? It would appear that there are deep hawk setups just like the ones that I day trade with. Yes, there absolutely are. Stop. That is very interesting to me. I think I just may have stumbled upon a new way to uh, swing trade here. Wow, we are so far away from it. I do not love that. <laughs> I do not love that. You know, typically when you pull far away from the developing value very high, you know, eventually you do come to revisit it. So I would not be surprised if we eventually, you know, come back and revisit here because we're so far away from the diva relative to uh, the October low. Very, very notable. All right. So I'll, I will timestamp this as like the <laughs> tangent. <laughs> um, uh, tangent. So apologies. Anyway, moving back then to uh, our regularly scheduled programming here. Uh, okay, so moving on to MVDA. So MVDA, I you know I revealed it last week by accident, but this two weeks ago, this was the uh, trade zone given to our Swing Report subscribers. I'm not sure where the uh, how come the date and right? oh, it is showing up. Why well, this one is not, but. Either way, and then this was the public one. So uh, at this point now, you know, for either of these, you should be very comfortable, right? You should pretty much just have a stop under here, 812.55 if you're in from this one. And for if you're in from this one, then your stop should just be under 756.06. From a pure price action perspective, this chart looks super healthy, potentially just a monthly bull flag. It's got, it's going to have earnings coming up soon. Like it's, it's always the outlier, right? It's like, um, but. Anyway, so just timing wise, I mean, so, you know, it's anyone's guess, but I, I personally wouldn't be surprised if we just kind of chop around in here until like, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the market's just waiting, right, to see what kind of, you know, what kind of report they have uh, in their next uh, uh, call. So that's, 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 that's really it. I would not be surprised by that. And so basically, as long as we're holding over this 222 to 229 demand zone, which, you know, both of these trade zones were de uh, designed around, these buyers are doing totally fine, right? So just looking for a daily higher low right now. Technically, you could say this daily higher low has been set here at 882.31 because it did break the prior day's high. Um, but just not that much follow through, a bit of a red flag that you, that you didn't see that much follow through on it. But again, bigger picture of this chart is totally fine. So that's really it. Uh, for here, you know, from here on out, if you're looking for, you know, another trade, I think you're probably looking at something like this. Like at this point now, if you don't see follow through and like and like just the buyers going for it from here, like from a breakout from here, then at this point you probably want to be a bit more conservative with your next plays, right? So maybe something like this, looking for a lack of follow through down to here, something like this. I think is you know more reasonable now that if you don't see higher highs right away from here, right? We keep bouncing around. The sellers probably get more emboldened. Right, they probably try to dig under this low again, but if the buyers are going to defend anywhere below here, it would be here. And so if that's going to be the case, then something like this becomes pretty reasonable. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Space for a whoops, space for a weekly higher low. Anything over 756.06 will be good for one. And that is pretty much it. I can't even see the black though. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Uh <laughs> Bitcoin. All right, so Bitcoin here. Uh, it's at the key test area right now, right? Because again, we really care about this guy. This guy is sitting at all time high. As long as you can't find acceptance uh, below it, then you know obviously higher prices relative to that are being accepted. So there's a lot of stuff on right now. So uh, I guess let me kill some of this. Uh, this is was shared I think last week, right? This this just being the idea that okay, well the sellers got caught up. This is pretty much one way trade, except where you have this little bit of overlap here. And that was drawn uh, best on the hourly time frame, I think. All right, so you just have this little bit of sideways trade here, and that is pretty much what made these lows 
over here. So this trade zone then is just based on the idea that, all right, well, if they don't trade through this area, they don't come back down here, then this is all going to be very healthy consolidation. So right now, you know, technically you have a rinky dink daily lower high, but you know, you didn't really bounce for a higher low yet. So anything over here, uh, five, six, five, zero, zero is going to be good for one. And if this is going to be kind of like an inverse head and shoulders dealio, then you don't want to lose these lows over here, which is at five, nine, five, seven, three point three two. So, you know, again, this is pretty much also a play for a potential inverse, uh, head and shoulders. So I realized that the risk to this is actually quite low. So um, from down to here. So I did initiate on this pass back over today recently. Uh, it's just an ad. And I just threw my stop under it. Uh, it's, so I'm just being a little bit more loose with this kind of a trade. I, you know, it's not really, again, it's not that much risk. And uh, my crypto sizing is not really that big because I'm on Coinbase and it kind of sucks. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, yeah, so I just got my stop under the low, and um, we'll see how that goes. If we get back to this depot, then I'll chop it up. Um, and if we stop out, we stop out. That's fine, no problem. So anyway, that's pretty much it, because Bitcoin is also potentially a monthly bull flag. Weekly lower high, lower low, not really seeing that much follow through. And on the daily time frame, now space for a higher low. So, you know, I don't love this battle here for this 61.003 level, but it's what it is. And... Uh, yeah, this is exactly why I just threw my stop under here because I just kind of figured there would probably be more of a battle here now that that was the most follow through they've seen before. Like when you're dealing with it over here and you're falling from pretty high places, it's a very different context than when you've just broken through the level and now you're broken back above it and now you're back testing it as support. You know, it's, it's a little bit shakier, right? Because you've just essentially lost the battle here. The buyers essentially lost the battle here, but then recovered, right? So now they're working on following through with that recovery, right? Because, you know, if you somebody's, you know, beating on you and you recover and counter you st still have to finish the fight right so um so that's what the buyers are trying to get done right now okay that is it and then for ethereum i still have no change to this right so ethereum is you know based off of this guy and this guy this trade zone i mean based off of this structure and this structure this structure which is what re uh, rejected price or i'm sorry it's actually based off of this structure which was trying to support price over here and then made for this major high over here Right, and it's based off of this guy because this this guy was what made this major low over here, and then tries the whole price here, tries the whole price here. So we're watching these two fellas for Ethereum because as long as we're holding over this guy, then we should expect price action like this, right? And so that's what this trade zone is designed around because as long as this high over here, two seven one seven point eight nine, is not violated, well then obviously the change from this breakout has again not been violated. Like look look, look at how much work the sellers are doing, right? Just to negate this right this is always very notable right this is this was this much damage done in 28 bars or 28 days and so far and double that time they have yet to come back down here so despite the fact that sellers have are definitely control of the daily trend building a sideways lower sideways lower sideways lower still it's a lot of time to not yet have negated this move so it's pretty notable the volume is also declining you'll see this is the 20 day moving average for volume when it's starting to fall, taper off so I, I still stand by this trade zone. If you are initiating down here, you can be taking partial profits over here, 3202.80, and just grinding out a position, right? And then just stop it out no later than 2461-ish under this big old point of control from 2570.27, right? So this trade zone is based off of that big demand zone, but also this prior high here, 2717.89, right? So I still stand by this. I, th I think it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, here's to see what it would look like if we do one from here now. Let's do that developing. Sitch, wow, it hasn't come back to the Deepak in a long time. Interesting. So that's notable, right? Because you would think then that having not come back to the Deepak, which is here, since all the way back here, and so many breaks of the deval, that that should be the ghost sign. The sellers, you know, that they should be trying to hold on to the deval, and the failures to move the deval lower by holding under it is very notable, right? So the Deepak hasn't moved down in quite some time. I would not be surprised with the snapback kind of a deal. To test the depot there. Anyway, let's uh, see. So CCJ still have nothing new on CCJ. Um, you know, if you were in from that trade zone of old, you are just sitting really pretty. Uh, <laughs> I know we got one fellow who's still in it and doesn't like how much um, he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't like how sm small his runner is. So it's a good complaint to have. <laughs> anyway, um, but I, I don't think that we necessarily have missed the boat on this yet. So I'm still looking at 440.47. Like I don't, I would not be surprised if we continue to chop around. That's kind of what it does. 
right? Like it, it broke to a new low here, chopped around a bit and didn't take out this local demand zone and then rallied straight through this guy and then chopped around a bit under this supply zone, right? Oops. Under this major supply zone sitting at all time high, right? And then no follow through, chopped around under here and then boom, traded through it again. So, you know, it's just kind of an expanding range. It's definitely still all about this supply and this demand. So I personally wouldn't be surprised if it came all the way back down to 38.87, honestly. So, yeah, I'm still just looking for that. Plays off of 44.47, plays off of 38.87. That being said, you know, the weekly chart, it's okay. Space for a higher low over 45.10. But, you know, after trading CCJ a little bit now, not a lot, but just a little bit, I kind of... I'm kind of getting a better feel for I think how erratic it is, right? So um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna just see if this is if this might not be just more of an expanding range, personally. Okay. Um, that being said, you know, aggressive. If you want to be a little bit more aggressive, then you can just be doing stuff like this, really, right? Like just bottom fishing, assuming that okay, as long as you don't come under here, then you're fine. So something like this, reasonable. Okay. And then ten. Like I said, I still stand by this trade zone, right? Um, the bigger, longer term chart does not look good. Weekly trend is now bearish, lower high and lower low. Key lower high resistance is at 46.13. You're potentially just rejecting from this supply here, right? Like, you know, this is a bit of a red flag unless these buyers can get back to testing this guy again for 5.20 and ideally get back to 51.70 so that we can get back to thinking, okay, what we're looking at is just balance under this guy right and over this guy this guy which was obviously a big deal over here and is being a big deal right now this guy which was obviously a big deal over here and here and here and again you know that's what we're looking at right so ideally these buyers will you know kind of break out of this falling wedge like pattern that they've been in for quite some time right so the most steepest one looks like this right so that another failure to break over this guy but you know it's been wedging for a long time there's a lot of different ways in which you could draw it you know, something like that is fine. Got a couple of hits over there. Anyway, so uh, that's pretty much it. So the daily chart is a, a bit of a red flag, right? To higher low, higher high, no follow through, multiple highs there as well. And then to higher high there with no follow through, pretty notable volume on this selling. You know, still you call for what it is, right? It's, it's about this guy now. Uh, well, we can ignore these now. It's about this guy now, right? This breakout high, it's all about this guy. You can notice that. You know what happened here right You're, you had two days where the lows are right there so 42.02 and 42.67 becomes super key uh these buyers need to get back up to 45.20 just to breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief to see okay to say that we're probably doing more of this right because you know seeing no fault under the point of control is a good look uh but again they need to start being constructive the buyers need to start being constructive by finding acceptance for 45.20 otherwise you know that would increase the probability that we just come test the value area low of this guy here. Okay, I shouldn't have stolen that arrow. All right, that's pretty much it for 10. And then finding for MSOs, uh, it's the same deal, you know? And something to consider is like, if the overall market's gonna continue to remain strong and IWM is like kind of flirting again with the lows of that very key daily supply zone, right? So. You know, if IWM does get this breakout here, right, if you don't see acceptance back under here and they do break out of finding acceptance over 207.61 and we start cracking this guy again, that's that's probably going to embolden, you know, these uh, MSOs and even CCJ to, to maybe not CCJ, but these smaller, more hype names like TAN even, right, these smaller names will probably get more confidence, right, if the IWM can break over that structure. So MSOs is doing it like kind of a similar thing, right, where you have this supply it's not the same exact supply like if you combined all of this then that would pretty much look like iwm supply right iwm has been this year is from what 2021 so it's like pretty much all of 2021 right so if you look at all of 2021 for msos it would be all of this up until here right and so this is kind of like the no man's land then all right so msos is kind of battling its own no man's land whereas uh, iwm is already on the highs of its no man's land you know what i mean all right so like because they're, they're the most correlated right so for MSOs, then I, again, I would stand by this, right? Like, I think this is a very reasonable um, trade zone because, well, I mean, it's still all about this fella here, right? As long as acceptance over this fella, then they should be trying for this guy. You know what I mean? So that is, uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. I, I hear people entering, so these dogs are probably going to lose it soon. So uh, no change to this, right? The trade zone has already worked two times, and um, that is... 
that's really it, right? So uh, you can't love the fact that you're seeing weekly higher higher highs like in follow through, but you know, um, technically, we care more about these horizontal levels, right? And so as long as this structure is supportive of price, then we should expect this. And as of right now, it is they're doing their best to try to defend this structure. They'll need acceptance over 9.37 and then uh, 9.64 for confidence in that. So that is pretty much it. Appreciate you guys sharing some of your time and energy with me. If you found any of that valuable, hit us with a like, subscribe. That helps us out a lot. Otherwise, hope you enjoy the rest of your week and I will see y'all soon. Farewell.